Hey guys, Jason here from Head First again. Today we're going to talk about relays and if you want to understand or you want to build or mod an amplifier like this where you can remotely switch between channels or different options, you need to understand what a relay is and how to use them. So in this video today we're going to do a bit of a deep dive on that. This is a theory and a little bit of a how-to guide stick around i hope it's useful so what does a relay look like right the small signal relays that we use look like this this is a double pole double throw okay and you can see it's got eight pins on it these two pins here are for the dc coil which we'll talk about in a second or in the next segment and then there's three pins on each side here. So this is the like a, a three pole switch. You've got one switch here and one switch here. It's double pole, double throw, which means it has two independent switches, but they operate simultaneously. Then we have this style here, which is smaller. This is a single pole, double throw switch. And these two guys in the middle here are the coil and then down here we've got the kind of common terminal and then one side of the switch here and one side of the switch there and what we do is and this is kind of how I ended up getting into printed circuit board design is that you have printed circuit board the footprint like that that will fit the relay beautifully just like so and then you will see solder on the other side right so if you can't do custom PCB design and I'm assuming you're watching this that you probably can't then what you can get and we have these on the Evolve DIY store is just a little board like this because if you're doing like a point to point uh, or a turret board amp it can be difficult to enter to integrate a relay into it right and 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 i have seen and this is how i started out people will take a relay like this and they'll hot glue it to the bottom of the chassis and then solder directly to the pins you're much better off getting a little pcb like this that allows you to house the relay as it was intended okay and then you've got pads here that you can actually solder wires to um, much easier way to do it now here's uh, a close-up on some relays that are in our evil Joe amplifier which was used at the right at the beginning of this little video and I just want to demonstrate that what I'm doing here this this switch um, that I'm switching here, which is just out of shot, but it's a front panel switch just like these ones are. Um, it is activating the coil on the relay, and we're going to talk about what that means and you know what impact it has on the relay switch. But if you just listen carefully, I'm going to move this back and forward without the switch making a noise, but you'll hear the relay itself. These relays, you'll hear them click. As they move back and forward and you can see the leds i've got like leds on the front panel you can kind of see in the video here that they move between this one and this one over here 
So the relays are changing the signal flow of the amplifier, bringing different gain stages in and out and different options in and out. So now we're going to talk about uh, how you activate the relay and how you might use it in a basic circuit. Okay, so let's have a look at using a relay in a simplified schematic, just by way of example. And I'm going to do this on the iPad. Okay, so we've got imagine the signal flow through your circuit is running from left to right okay so imagine this is your guitar input here and as i said i've got a very simplified schematic here so i'm just going to do like a box like this to represent a gain stage okay and this is we're going to draw a double pole double throw relay so double pole double throw means it has two independent switches. They both switch at the same time, but you can switch two parts of the signal simultaneously. And I'll draw that like so. Um, okay, and what I'm drawing here, uh, you can think of these as the contact points on the switch, and you'd represent those in the schematic, just like this, really. And so this is kind of in, okay, and this is out. And what I can do here is choose between two different signal paths for your audio signal to travel through or to go, you know, to go down. Um, and so you can imagine this one here is a higher gain channel. And let's say I have two cascaded gain stages. And then down here, just a single gain stage. And what this is representing really is that when the relay is off or not energized is the way to think of it, right? The coil is not energized. The signal flow is going to travel down the top path down here right and we're going to have a one two three gain stage preamp running when i activate the relay what happens is the switch moves on both sides simultaneously so now my switch is now this way and we have a one two gain stage preamp. All right, so let's talk a bit about what actually makes a relay work. How do you get it to actually click and change state or have the switch open and close? So let's talk about what's kind of in a relay, right? So if I just draw this kind of box here and let's imagine that this is the actual, you know, the outer dimensions of the relay and I'm gonna draw a very kind of simplified um, version of what's inside here but um, imagine on the right hand side here what I'm drawing is the actual switch itself that we want to open and close okay so there's our three terminals and this could be you know this could be the in right and like in reference to the simple block diagram that we just drew and this could be the out where you're uh, having that switch open and close to invoke some kind of different circuitry within your preamp or your amplifier to change the sound of it. So how do we get this switch that's inside the relay to open and close? Well, we use magnetism, okay? So the, the switch mechanism itself um, is magnetic, it's metal. And if we create a magnetic field, inside the relay we uh, can lift the switch and close it and we do that through the use of a coil okay so you can imagine this is a metal core and a coil of wire around it um, if you run a current electrical current through a wire coil okay 
it will create a magnetic field. Okay, just the basics of uh, electrical current here. So the, in the relays that we use in these amplifiers, these preamps and guitar amps and so on, you're always dealing with DC relays. With a DC current, uh, you'll allow the magnetic field to be created or to open, um, and it will stay like that whilst the current is flowing. As soon as you shut the DC off, the magnetic field will collapse, and then that activates our switch. So what we'd normally do is we would have um, this coil here set up with our uh, DC voltage supply in the amp. Now normally you would choose 12 volts if you have a 12 volt rail in your amp. Um, so if you have an amp with DC heaters or you're implementing an amplifier with DC heaters with your mod, then you can reuse that 12 volt line, that 12 volt DC line to power all of your relays. The final thing we need in here is we need, um, we need a switch to actually, uh, which I'm going to draw here, to actually make the have the uh, coil uh, active and inactive, right? Um, so what we're doing here really is that the switch for the coil is just a remote for the actual switch in the audio circuit. So this switch here, number one, is a remote for this switch over here, number two. And that is how you set up remote switching. So something like a foot switch in the amplifier, um, where this switch here, point one, is the foot switch on the ground in front of the guitar player, and it's activating completely remotely the actual switch in the circuit that is allowing the circuitry to change or the extra gain stage to come in and so on and so forth. You, would, you could also implement the switch as a panel on the front. All right? So on the front of the amplifier, you have a toggle switch. Um, it's you know, switching the channel back and forward or the gain stage back and forward or that feature on the amp. And it's doing the same thing. It's just uh, um, activating the coil on the relay, which is then allowing that switch here, number two switch, to open and close. All right, so by way of further illustration, I'm going to now go through the schematic here, which is the schematic that I drew up and used on the last video that I did in this style, where I had my iPad, where we uh, talked about adding a gain stage to the front of a 2203 style JCM800 style amplifier, right? Where rather than it being a three and a two gain stage set up, it's a four and a three. So four gain stages in the high input, three gain stages in the low. Now, what happens if you want to have an amplifier design where you just have a single input jack, right? And then you can have a foot switch, which can activate that fourth gain stage. So you can go from a four gain stage to a three gain stage simply by hitting your foot switch there, which is a pretty handy feature in an amp, right? That gives you a kind of a boost for leads and extra gain when you want it. So let's talk about uh, and I'll just draw it in kind of in real time about how we would do that by marking up the schematic. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is I'm going to delete, oh, I'm going to remove out of the schematic the low input jack, right? Because that's no longer necessary. And I'm creating a I guess a break point here in the middle where what I want to have is a single pole double throw switch, a relay, right? A single pole double throw relay. You can do it with a double pole double throw and then you've got one side of the switch that you can use for something else. Maybe you could use the second side of the double pole double throw as a ground reference for LEDs. If you want an LED to light up on the front panel of your amp. That's the way to do it, right? So uh, let's just draw this in. So what I want to have is I'm going to have, you can imagine my single pole double throw switch here is three terminals. And uh, my switch is set in that side. 
And what I want to do is I want to have the output of this extra gain stage connected to that terminal. And this side here, I'm just going to jump over the ground wire there. I want it connected to the input jack. Because in this design, we now have a single jack input into the amp. Okay. And so that's your guitar, right? Straight out of the pickup coming in. And it's going to connect uh, both to the the input grid, the 33K resistor you can see there right at the beginning, the input grid of uh, V1, which is V1 here. And it's also connecting to one side of that relay switch so that when the switch is the way that it's drawn now, my signal that's flowing through the entire preamp includes V1 and V1 is pushing into the input of V2, right? So we're cascading these gain stages. When I switch the relay the other way, then the switch heads that way, okay? And the input of V2 is now just my guitar, right? So we're taking a whole gain stage out. It's pretty simple, right? So straight up, once you start using these things and you kind of get a sense of how to put them together, it's not that complicated. One of the things that you need to be wary of is that when you put relays like this that are switching between two signal paths, particularly very early on in the preamp of a high gain amp, you'll get pop, right? So when the mechanical switch moves back and forward, you'll get like an audio, like a pop that'll be kind of injected into the preamp and you'll hear it, right? And it'll come like, sound like a bit of a loud clack or a pop you know um there are a few techniques to get rid of that right you can get into more sophisticated mute circuits which a lot of high gain modern amps will have but a very simple technique is just to make sure that there's a ground reference for by way of, of, a, of a resistor that there's a ground reference that immediately follows the switch and you can see right here where I've just circled, I've got that one mag resistor there, which is kind of part of the the old circuit that was set up when I had the two the two jacks, right? That was actually the grid link resistor for the low input jack. Um, but in this design, I would keep it I would keep it there, right? Because what I'm what I'm doing here is I'm making sure that when the mechanical switch is moving between the two positions, the grid of the V2 gain stage has always got a ground reference. It'll help. All right, it'll help massively in reducing the pop that you would otherwise get from a relay when it switches. All right, guys, hope this was helpful, useful, informative, whatever. Uh, please let me know in the comments. And if you'd want me to cover any other topic in this style where I'm kind of drawing on the iPad and just talking about this stuff, let me know. All right, put it in the comments and I'll add it to the list of things that we will cover. I'll see you next time.